For the last month, we've been celebrating the contributions of Latinos as part of Hispanic Heritage Month. Their impact on everything from politics to the environment to my wife's Zumba dancing. <laughs> Truthfully. <laughs> Tonight, WGN's Lourdes Duarte takes a look at the big picture, the Latino influence on everyday life. Lourdes. Oh, we will talk about Zumba, Mark, so make sure your wife knows that. All right, Hispanic Heritage Month ends tomorrow, so we wanted to see how Latinos are impacting American pop culture. When it comes to politics, they've been a strong block, but it's not just there. Think music, movies, and of course, you just can't forget the food. That's it, that's it. From your workout to what you ate before it, Mexico City, Mexico, to what you wore after it, no better signs of the Latino effect than in the things we so often ignore. Let me see those hips. Take Zumba, for example, came from Colombia, now a hit in the U.S. It's just a blend of Latin American and international rhythms put in together with basic dance steps to create a fitness program that uh, burns calories, tones, and it's a good time. Then there's the Zumba guy. Uno, no, three, One of the hottest songs right now, number two on the Billboard Hot 100 list, a Miami rapper with Latin roots. Yes, music, perhaps the best portrayal of the Latin influence. It entered the mainstream of the U.S. with, say, Ricky Valens, Ricardo Valenzuela, and La Bamba in the 50s. Gloria Stefan, and as we approach 2010, Shakira, you know, is now all is uh, comes in from Colombia at the same time Beyonce records in Spanish last year. On radio and on screen, Latinos an increasingly important part, even with the smallest of audiences. Sometimes family just means people that you care about. Actor they Wilmer about Valderrama you. is the voice behind Handy Manny, a bilingual Disney cartoon. Our culture has been mainstream, and I believe that that and the Latin community in general, you know, have been uh, one of the most influential, you know, uh, forces when it comes to the entertainment period. And if we're talking Latin flavor, we can't forget the food. Ninety miles from day one has been a success. All we had to do was open our doors, and we have lines of uh, all kinds of people. In Chicago, all sorts of Latin restaurants are popping up. Ninety miles serves Cuban. Their first spot so popular they opened a second within a year. Well, probably it's just part of a larger trend that people are more aware of different global approaches to different foods. Bogota, Colombia. And from food to fashion, Latino designers leaving their mark, looking for ways to incorporate the culture into clothing. I think especially right now, um, I know for um, spring 2010, there was uh, a definitely a, a huge impact in the um, Fashion Week in New York. Fashion, food, movies, just a taste of the Latin flavor that continues to catch on. You can't hardly look in any direction of this country or listen in any direction and not hear music that has back and forth uh, shared influences. And she brings up such an important point because we talk about the Latino influence on the U.S., but there's a big U.S. influence on Latin America. You know, oh, we really? talk about food or TV shows or even music. Mm -hmm. You know, we're influencing them as well. Wow. So it's it's not just uh, right. coming back this forth, way. Like yeah, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. It's a good thing. So a little Latin flavor, a little sabor Latino, guys. Yes. Mark? Sabor Latino. There you go. Good Practice you. that with your son tonight. I you? mimic like a parrot very well. <laughs> Thank you. Adios, Neil. Uh, good job.